What's up everyone, today I'm going to be once again playing in the ESL Open Cup with a handicap. Today I'm going to be doing the greediest build possible every single game. CC first, triple CC without units, you can name it. Let's begin. All right, the first opponent of the day is going to be a Masters 1 Zerg player. Now, against Zerg, there are some insanely greedy builds you can do. CC first is actually not that crazy against Zerg. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for CC first into a triple CC before making any units. That's the plan. Now, if I get intact, we might indeed be in trouble, uh, but we'll see. I actually think this is going to be a very fun experiment because in StarCraft, so much about copying pro gamers builds and stuff is about being legit you know doing a strategy that can theoretically beat everything but realistically a lot of times if you watch games strategies are gonna go unpunished maybe it's possible that if you do it once in a while playing extremely greedy is the best thing you can do you know hidden base hidden base like just something really insane the only problem with that is that you'll have to practice it very well uh, a lot of people think that if you have a hidden base you just have more money and the game is good for you but one thing that's very important is your build still flows well. If you have a hidden base, but you haven't practiced the build properly and your stim timing is still going to be too late, the Zerg will still make too many drones or you will die to an attack, right? So even though it could be a sick strategy, you do need to put a lot of time into practice. I wonder if it could actually be fun for me to at some point just figure out the perfect greedy strategy with like two hidden bases on the perfect map and then try it against the best player i can find to see if it actually uh works out super well or if it's an absolute disaster that could be fun now it could even happen in this tournament if you guys are new to watching the esl open cup uh, it is a weekly cup with points that go towards the global circuit and because of that it is stacked with pro gamers uh, right now i'm playing the esl american cup it's not region locked it's just on the american server so what that means is that very often you'll play against the top of the top Korean pros and I literally mean among the best like dark plays these sometimes you know multiple time uh, premier tournament champion even world champion beyond plays also world champion etc etc now obviously with a greedy build I was actually tempted to scout but obviously if I'm gonna play the greediest thing possible I shouldn't scout now this is gonna be really funny because if I get cheesed I could technically still win the game but I will need to be insanely clutch to make that happen like really insanely clutch now I just realized again Zerg I might not be able to send an SCV this late to hit an expansion. I was actually planning on doing a hidden base still, but I might not be able to get away with it because the overlord is probably already here and it would see my SCV. Now you guys can tell my build. Uh, I'm going for CC into reactor into a third command center for one gas. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, if I die with this build, then, you know, it's obviously slightly my fault for the builder, but, you know, it is part of the experiment here. Now I am going to go for straight barracks. I'm also going to skip Hellions. I'm not going to do any, you know, harassment or something like that. I'm just straight going to go into maybe some kind of three racks, maybe some kind of tank push later on. I do think if this build goes completely unpunished, I could have a massive army very fast. Now there's a Zergling here. I don't actually want him to scout my three racks. So I'll just dance this SCV around a little bit. And I think my Marines are going to finish perfectly in time to block it. Oh. Okay, well, he could have seen a second bear. Actually, thinking about it, if he saw the three racks, maybe it would have been good for me because then he might not realize I'm playing a super greedy 3cc build. Uh, but yeah, N normally if you play these kind of builds, what happens is you still want to make some safety uh, precautions like getting a bunker, getting a blah, 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 you know, getting maybe a tank a little bit early. And it does weaken the point of the build a little bit because the point is to be super greedy and hit a super hard timing later on. Uh, so I'm also going to take it to the max. I'm not going to do any scouting. No bunker. Nothing. Uh, and then we'll see. I don't think I could... I could either make medevacs or go for siege tanks. I'm not quite sure which one makes more sense. I think medevacs might actually make more sense. But at the same time, mass marine does not usually get the job done. Uh, you know, I say as someone who literally plays mass marine medevac to grandmaster. Uh, but you guys know what I mean. I think uh, the factory units would definitely have some uh, useful impact there. Now, there's an overlord literally flying over the third, so I, I guess he... At this point, he probably didn't realize what I'm doing, guys. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I want to say he knows what I'm doing at this point. Now, getting an overlord is also... Not, I'm actually not even too sad about it. I feel like, you know, at this point, I might have already gotten away with it. Especially if he drones really hard now, because the medevac timing could hit sneakily hard. He has no idea what the timings of my buildings are, uh, so that could work in our advantage. Now, later on, I'm going to repurpose these tech labs to make tanks with them. 
because uh, I really want to play pure, pure marine tank. To really maximize the use of my greedy build, I want to do a big push after rather than just going into a macro game. I mean, obviously, I want to try multiple things today. Uh, I mean, if we get eliminated in the first best of three, then that would be a little bit rough. Oh, I, I did forget to mention it is a best of three, if you guys didn't know. Every round is a best of three until the finals now. Uh, believe it or not, guys, we have never gotten to the finals while playing with handicaps. Uh, that is has proven to be a little bit difficult. I have won the tournament, I want to say, three times playing normally. But with handicaps, that is, uh, yeah, a little bit next level. Now, what I'm going to do here is another greedy move. Is I'm going to move across before having Medivax. Just assuming that he won't catch me out on the middle of the map. And then I'm going to boost my Medivax behind to catch up. Uh, and this is also, it's greedy in a different way, but it is the greediest way to move out. Because if I would get caught here by, let's say, Bailings or so, um, and I don't have my Medivacs, I will just lose these Marines. So this is pretty greedy. Now, should I get a second factory? My upgrade, dude, I have a little supply. It's, it's not even six minutes and I'm almost at 100 supply. That is pretty crazy, right? I don't, I don't think I'm being, uh, you know, outrageous to say that. I think that is a pretty crazy amount of supply. He does have Bane Links. Let's see. I'm just going to stim in here. Let's see if I can maybe... Yeah, he's going to attack a little bit too fast. There we go. My medivacs aren't even here yet. Okay, I'm going to have to do some splitties, I'm afraid. No, he's just going to back off, all right. I don't really want to fight there on the creep, to be honest. Not not my favorite place to fight. I snapped a few banings for free. And that was about all I had to do. Now, actually, actually thinking about it, it could even be greedier to not scan the creep. Because then I can drop meals. Maybe I should also not do a single scam. But that also feels a little bit stupid rather than greedy. But I guess it's, you know, they definitely uh, overlap a little bit. I'm going to get these two in the gas. Yeah, maybe I should actually just only only mule. There we go. Though realistically, I have enough money to afford what I need. He's now scouting my third base. It's actually kind of funny that he scouts that because he, you know, he pretty much saw me build that. Or no, he saw it when it was finished, actually. Oh, I did scam. Yeah, actually, I'm not quite sure whether it's... Oh, he has a base up there? Huh. Okay. That is interesting. Wait, these are not all stimmed, I think. Are they stimmed? They didn't look stimmed to me for some reason. Was I pressing the wrong hotkey, maybe? Yeah, this looks like a fun fight, actually. This is doing triple micro at the same time. The drop, the splits out of the drops, and the splits with the natural medivax. Now... Oh, actually, I could have been even greedier by building my CCs on location as well. Um, obviously, I could always be more greedier by playing eight command centers first, but, you know... You gotta make units at some point, right? Now we're just gonna do some kiting here. And I... Well, actually, that is a lot of queens. No, I think we're gonna break it. Unless there's more banings up there. Like, queens are very, like, surprisingly good against just marines here. Um, one more hit, maybe? Nice. Well, I only got one bailing with that, so it wasn't the best hit ever. I guess I'll take my fifth on location as well. Get a CC down here. Bam. Do another scan. Because, you know, why not? At this point, I'm, uh... I've already scanned enough to warrant the next 10 scans as well, uh, I guess. It is a bit weird that I have a second factory. I haven't seen that many tanks come out. Have I been mis macroing maybe? Probably. I don't feel- I feel like I usually don't miss macro, but at this point, uh, I would have expected a few more tanks to be here. Now, I wonder how I can, like, one-up this in the next game as well, you know? Because this game is going to be one at this point. This is going to be the final uh, ditch effort by him. And then it's game number one with a very greedy build. Uh, we mostly won this one because of my opponent failing to macro a little bit there, which is understandable. That's kind of what happens in, in StarCraft. If your opponent is a little bit faster, I was definitely a little bit faster than him. I take his APM. He misses some injects. He misses some... Uh, actually, he could have made units from those. Not enough to spend all the money, though. But anyway, that was game one. Let's see if we can play even greedier in the next game. And game number two on the macro map. And this map, guys, it has a freaking gold base. So should we CC first at the gold or not? I could also make my third on the gold location. I'm not quite sure. There's actually a lot of maps where you can hide bases on here. Um, I actually had that in a... What is that? I'm not sure. Was it a marine episode? A cycle mine episode? I'm actually not quite sure what it was anymore. Uh, but I did get to hide some bases on this map. Uh, and I'll show you guys why you can do that. In the bottom left of this map, you have a gold base, which is kind of like nicely tucked into this corner, bottom left. But you also have two bases up here that have rich gas, which basically produces double gas. So we are in a situation where I could potentially hide three bases. That does sound a little bit... 
too much maybe. Uh, but we'll see. Once upon a time, one of my favorite strategies ever, by the way, was... When I played against... I think it was against Stefano. I played against Stefano on a map. I think the map was called Deathwing or Deadwing or something like this. Uh, Death Aura. Death Aura is what it was called. And what I did on that map, it had one base that was kind of like in the middle of the map, really, with two rich gases. But some, even though it was in the middle, you wouldn't scout it naturally. So I took that base, I took both of the gases, and then I went four port battle cruiser on like two bases, right? Two base plus the hidden base. And it was actually insane, because normally you just counter battle cruisers by. You know, you make corruptors at some point, or you have enough queens, etc. But I had so many BCs, I could actually still kill his army, which was just uh, incredible. Now, my eco at the start is going to be a little bit worse, because I had to use an SCV to travel to the corner there, which is. You know, definitely going to cost me a little bit of money. But I'm basically going to go for the same build. I would love to actually try and get, like, mass BCs up. Though after that first game, the insane build that I did, I really wouldn't be surprised if my opponent just brings out, like, a nice cheese and just messes me up, you know? So maybe... Uh, I Like, the thing with this, I want to play a greedy style. And the only way to be, like, kind of greedy and kind of safe at the same time is by playing 3 racks. Because 3 racks Marine... It's good against some all-ins. It's really not good good against all of them. But if there's something I can defend, it's that. But I feel like at the same time, if I would play something like Cloak Banshee, I might already not be that greedy anymore, you know? Because it's relatively safe. I mean, I'm playing CC first, Reactor, 3rd CC. So it's always got to be greedy. But what still, guys? I, uh, I like to take my things to the extreme. I take my challenges seriously, okay, guys? I mean, you guys definitely know that by now. If you guys are enjoying this challenge and enjoy my, my commentary and stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel, by the way. We're almost at 50k subs. I would love to reach it. That would feel like uh, an incredible number. Started this year, my goal was to... Uh, I think I wasn't even at 10k subs started this year, actually. And then at some point, I reached 10k, and I was like, man, this is going so well. And I made, I made a community post, and I was like, guys, ultimate goal. I know it's ambitious, but we might be able to reach 25k subs by the end of the year. And now I'm here asking you guys if you can help me get 50k subs by October, which, uh, you know, does uh, sound like a dream a little bit. Now, I am going to go for the factory here. Oh, actually, there's SCV. In. Oh, this is actually sick. Now he sees there's no third. So maybe and he sees there's no third and there's a factory. So maybe he just thinks I've switched up my plan. That is very possible. Hmm, that could work out quite well for me. I'm going to start a wall off here. And I'm going to move my SCV to that top. I'm actually going to take the one on his side. That seems smarter. I don't think the watchtower sees it. Like, there is a watchtower there. I don't think it sees that. No, it definitely doesn't see that far. Um, all right, let's just go for BCs, I guess. Going to get two thingies over here. I'm going to delay my... Uh, I was going to say third, because it's not even four minutes. I'm going to delay my 4cc for a little bit. So I can actually get all these gases up. So I can go for um, yeah more BCs. Simply put. I'm gonna, here you can see the rich rich Vespian Gazer mines so much gas. Uh, doesn't even need that many workers. I think it's actually... Ratio-wise, it's way more efficient than gold minerals. Gold minerals mine like 7 instead of 5. But I'm pretty sure the gas just mines double, which is pretty sick. I'm gonna go for my fusion core. I, I'm just... Every, every second we don't get attacked, I'm just happy. Okay, let me make something from this so it looks normal. Uh, he does see the factory is not doing anything, though. That could actually be problematic. Okay, here we go. And then we'll get a second starport, because that's about to die. Actually, I could have made the Viking before thinking about it. It's just, I actually really have this problem when I'm recording videos these days. Even if it's like... Or it's the same, it's more, more when streaming. Because when I do videos, I usually do challenges. But when I'm playing, I almost always feel like I'm doing a challenge. So I kind of stop making other units than the ones I'm already playing with. Because I kind of have the feeling that I'm doing some kind of challenge always, you know. Where I'm limited in terms of units. But very often is obviously uh, not the case. Now, how many BCs can we afford with this amount of hidden bases? That is the question. I do, I'm do. i going to get Yam my Yamato first, actually. Yamato first is sick, because then your first two BCs arrive with Yamato. I could also... Oh. Okay. Uh, that is a scout. Wait, who the hell scouts there? I, I didn't even hide bases in the last game, and he still scouted. That's actually nuts. I guess he maybe wanted to send an over to the corner of the map for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it, it could be, right? Or did I hide a base in the last game? I didn't, right? No, no, I didn't. Oh, this is actually insane. His brain is actually massive, guys. He figured me out so fast. 
Well, you guys think I'm in trouble. What I think is that I have four bases now. It's just going to take me a while to fly them all the way back to my home. But I still have four bases, guys. So feeling fantastic about this. A little bit of a setback. Not quite going to be able to afford four starport battlecruisers anymore. But, uh, you know, we still have our chances. That's all that matters. This creep is already here, though. That's pretty scary. I mean, these... By the way, just so you guys know the timing of this. A normal two starport battlecruiser rush is supposed to hit at six minutes. Mine are gonna hit like 30 seconds late, 30, 40 seconds late, which is, yeah, that's obviously pretty bad. Um, but I don't know, maybe he's weirded out, maybe he has no idea this is going on. And it can still work. I'm definitely not gonna give up yet, of course. Uh, now, can I defend both of these bases at the same time? That is the question. Now, it could also be that I just wasn't paying attention and that he saw my SEVs or something like that, you know, like I have no idea. Here we go, that queen is gonna go down pretty fast. And I'm, gonna, I'm about to have Yamato, guys. So if he brings his queens, they're actually going to die very, very fast here. I don't know why he's running these away. I wasn't even attacking his drones. He cancels... He cancels the spire. Okay. Or no, the, the Hydra then, sorry. Probably to build a spire. Let's see. Okay. And I want to get more and more BCs. Now the plan here is that I'm going to wait for my next few BCs. And then I'll try to teleport on top of the Spire and kill it. My BCs are going to finish a little bit before. It's definitely going to be tight. But that is the plan. Because if, if Corruptors come out and you're playing BCs, you're usually just sad. Um, well, actually, it is really close, dude. Holy. Now, I think my BCs are going to be able to kill it. Especially if his Queens are out here. And I can target it without uh, regretting it. There's definitely a good chance. Okay, we're straight on there. And then... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just Yamato it, actually. No, I'll, I'll Yamato the Queens instead. And then we'll target this. Shoot the Spire, please. Get that one. Like, if the Spire is dead, he's kind of screwed here. Uh, the Spire is uh, the only thing that can win in this game at this point. Wait, he's gonna live. He wasn't microing. And there we go. Uh, we lost two hidden bases, but the two-port BC strategy still worked. Now, I just want to see if he had, like, an idea. Of, uh, it's, I think at some point he was just suspicious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was just spreading his overlords out, so... Uh, just well done scouting by him, diligent scouting. Normally, Zerg should forget about this, because what is the chance something is actually here? Uh, but he scouted diligently, and I guess he found the uh, bottom one with this overlord as well. I just missed... Uh yeah, I saw the Zerglings, I just didn't see the Overlord. So he saw them both with a good Overlord scout. Well done by him. Wasn't quite prepared for the double BC rush. Uh, so that's going into my favor. Anyway, that was a nice warm-up round against a Master 1 Zerg. And now we're going to play against some Grandmaster players. Let's go. The second series of the day is going to be tougher. We're going to play against fellow content creator Jason, who has a Master's Border because he doesn't play on this account. But I think he's usually about 5.6k MMR, which would be... Maybe like top 40 or so on the, the North American server. So definitely very hard. I don't think it's really difficult to be greedy in TVT without dying. Uh, if you play Reaper Expand without scouting, it's already greedy. But I want to take it to a little bit more of an extreme. So I could... Hmm. If Actually, I'm going to go for a CC first. Why not, guys? Okay, I'm going to be really stupid. I'm going to do a freaking CC first against Terran. That does not work, but if we get away with it, it will only be in the spirit of the show. Uh, I think we'll just like try three different levels of greedy. I'm gonna go with CC first, which is absolutely unheard of in TVT. Uh, then the next game I could maybe go for a gases expand, and in the other game I could maybe go for a Reaper expand without scouting. And in case that last option doesn't sound greedy to you guys, if we do a Reaper Expand without scouting, you get cheesed, you are 100% dead. There's nothing you can do about it. In the other matchups, not the case. In the other matchups, you can still win with a Reaper Expand uh, against Terran, not so much. So here we go, guys. CC first against Terran. There's actually uh, another story. I, like, I love to tell you guys stories. There used to be a map on which you could actually do this. And the reason why was because the map had zero Reaper jumping spots in the main. So all you had to do was place your buildings like this. So if your opponent went for a Reaper rush, you would just be walled off and they wouldn't be able to get in. You make like a bunker here on the side of the depot and you're just fine, right? So once upon a time, there was actually a map where it was possible. And of course, as you guys probably would have guessed, even on that map, I was the only player to even do this build because I am a little bit of a silly goose. Uh, but I do think it was possible. I won some uh, games with it in, uh, you know, the big European tournament back then. So I think it was definitely uh, worth trying. 
I also tried it against one of the best Terrans of all time, Innovation, in uh, Nation Wars, but I did lose that game, sadly. But that, it might have more come down to, you know, the actual skills for the macro game rather than the build order, right? So, uh, who knows? So, I guess he hasn't scouted me, which is actually very good news for us. I'm just going to make a bunker over here. Uh, and then I guess I'll just follow it up with an instant factory. Dude, if I get away with this, that would actually be nuts. I mean, he could totally just have like three barracks chilling right here. Uh, I do know that Jason usually is a very heavy macro player. So... We should be fine. We should be fine. Well, I'm not sure. Now, I have to admit, guys, since it's like four or five years ago that I did that CC first build, I don't quite know uh, how the build order went in the follow-up. I think so far I did everything fine. But beyond this point, I'm not quite sure. Two Reapers could be hitting my base right about now, actually. If he's going to come with two Reapers, they should hit me about now. If he's not going to attack me, I might actually be in a fantastic spot economically. Which would just be hilarious, because this build is not supposed to work. But it's a, it's the thing what I mentioned in game one, guys. Sometimes, greed just goes unpunished. And even though this build is completely unreasonable, uh, it could actually just, you know, give me a massive advantage. And I'm also going to make all of my add-ons... Um, like, he could literally be attacking me with, like, 8 units at any point. So, because he didn't attack me yet with his first two Reapers, I'm gonna move my units down to the natural, because now it's already more likely that he's gonna attack me here instead. I'm gonna make that depot here, because this one probably blocks Hellions, I think. And, I mean, you never know what you have to defend from. Uh, so that's good. And uh, just, just some more stories about Greed. At some point in TVT, in, uh, within the European scene at least, Koreans were always very good at TVT. Uh, but within the European scene in TVT, at some point I was pretty unbeatable. Uh, and it was basically off the back of a really greedy build that people didn't know how to punish. It was definitely punishable, but they didn't know how to. So every single game I played triple CC super fast... Uh, double armory before extra factories and they didn't know how to kill me so I just ended up having a 2-2 maxed mech army super fast and I would just aim with them every single time no matter what they did so uh, yeah Greed definitely has had some uh, some play in my pro gamer career history now we still haven't been scouted I think it might even be my time to scout or actually that doesn't fit with the greedy theme I'm just gonna say frick it and I'm just gonna stay at home not do anything uh, scouting related I could I could go do some raven harass for example um i think scouting doesn't necessarily fit with you know being greedy but doing a raven harass could though realistically if you guys want to be greedy you would still scout with a reaper by the way because scouting with a reaper does not sacrifice any economy so you know you might as well scout with it you're still gonna have a fantastic economy behind that i'm gonna send out my raven to harass uh which is another greedy thing in its own i'm not gonna have raven spells later on I am actually going to go for a fast second factory. I can maybe play like a nice mech timing off the back of being greedy here. Let's see. It, it, these kind of games are always really funny. If you don't scout, you literally have no idea what the opponent is doing. So for all I know, he's freaking making four battle cruises here. You know what I mean? Like if you don't scout, you actually have no idea. But the same is for him. He has no idea that I did an absolutely absurd build. Uh, and in his mind, I'm probably doing either something normal or I'm doing a challenge. Oh, that's a big tell. We're playing mech against mech here, guys. Because he's making a single eBay. Uh, that is actually a pretty big tell here. His third to see is not down yet. I mean, I'm doing some damage here, which is really nice. Let's keep my cyclone in position so I don't uh, accidentally let his raven into my base at the same time. I should probably be adding a 4cc very fast here too. 4cc, you know, double armory. Though actually, uh, since he's most likely playing mech, I can give you guys another big tip. Upgrades do really not matter a lot in mech against mech, like, at all. So, since he is playing mech, I'm probably just going to skip the armories. Regardless of it being greedy or not, I just don't think you need them in mech against mech. Everything dies to tanks anyway. Cyclones don't get bonus damage from... You know, attack upgrades because they do spell damage and blah, blah, blah. So there's a C going down. I would say that is most likely also his fourth command center. Let's see, there's another starport. Two factories and two starports. I'm actually using this as a scouting raven. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it was his fourth command center. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make... Actually, I can make more CCs actually because I'm... I have so much money because I was greedy, which is fantastic. Let's see, I think it's a good time to move out there. We, uh... Basically saw what he was up to with the Raven. And now we can hit it, our own timing. And then I'm gonna go for... What's it called? Oh, a little bit of damage here. 
gonna go for cyclones after this cyclones is the best option okay i got a, a reaper not bad it's all good sixth command center going down we're definitely yo his army is actually very small here uh but he does have raven energy so that is one thing let's see probably sieged up there um, I do need to keep pressuring him. Let's get the mag field upgrade. Now I have seven siege tanks against three, by the way. Which is a pretty sick advantage to have. You see, he's on sieging now. Let's get this base. I'm also going to make that an orbital, of course. Oh, he's actually going for it. That's kind of crazy here. I didn't expect that move. Don't think it's going to be uh, super great for him, actually. I have just more, more stuff than him. I guess because I was greedy. Uh... Well, yeah, it doesn't matter how I got them. More stuff is more stuff, and more stuff usually wins in StarCraft. But there we go. Um, and yeah, I'm obviously not all inning by any means, so I don't, you know, I'm pretty happy having traded. My fourth base is already saturated. I have 80 SCVs at almost 8 minutes. This is really sick for actually a normal game. Now, normally I would play Cyclones here. I think I'm actually going to follow his example and go for more Starports instead. Because it's a super campy map. On which you can't really make stuff happen. So I'm going to keep my Cyclone upgrade for the later game. And besides that, I'm just going to be taking so many bases. Oh, can I maybe... No, too late. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to go around here. This is actually a pretty good idea. I'm going to go around. And then I'll try to siege his base from the left side. Let's see. Oh, I actually had this base already. Oops, I could have lifted that earlier. That's a mistake on, on, my, on my greediness part. Now, at this point, I can actually get double armory for the vikings i think for the vikings I, oh why is that uh, making there for the vikings i'm gonna need them in the viking battle at least let's see what he has oh, i can actually siege it this is a really good position to siege does he have more vikings he does have more vikings so i'm gonna have to use my cyclops oh he's actually gonna oh i actually got one let's go the cycle is insane perfect i guess we're gonna take this one obviously gonna be an orbital as well and then this one too. You guys should be mining here. 101 SCVs. Okay. Uh, might, might be getting a little bit absurd on the SCV count. But I just want all my bases saturated, you know. I'm also making sure that I don't have... Uh... Oh, wait. I actually wasn't making an extra CC all this time. Oh. Okay. Then I really should have just grabbed all of them. I was kind of expecting my 6 CC to finish. But yeah, I guess I never had one. So that's a little bit of a brain fart by me. But it happens. My supply is just crazy for the time, though. I'm playing mech. I already had a battle. I'm on five bases. 180 supply. This is beautiful, though. If you get away with stuff like this, it really is beautiful. Like, it actually is. Now, the one problem is here, you can't really break mech unless I make liberators. There we go. Uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But it seems to me like he's just making mass viking and nothing else. So I should probably make more starports as well, just in case. Get a hidden base up here too. 10 minutes, let's go up to 8 bases, because why not? Can I take that base as well? Maybe I could take some in between. Um, I, I, I feel like I could pretty much just take like any base that I want at this point. Okay, let's see. There is a viking. Oh, he landed them. Actually, I could get that too. Why not? I'm going to make so many vikings, I might actually uh, use it. Let's see what is here. Nothing. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take every base on the map basically at this point. That's the plan. <laughs> was I gonna take this one? I, I want him to take a fifth base and see like my thirteenth base there. You know, that that is the plan. Like that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, we ha we almost have all of them, guys. We're we're almost there. Uh, I'm just gonna need some liberate. Let's get some uh, liberator range up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be an okay trade. Like, I think he has slightly... Oh, he actually doesn't have upgrades either. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be fine. I don't, I'm not sure who's going to win, but it's going to be fine either way. It's never going to be that bad of a trade. Cl cleans the game up a little. Oh, it was actually very even. Holy crap. I am going to win the trade. Let's go. I mean, he has reinforcements. I think I'm still going to win, even with the reinforcements. Oh, I have reinforcements too. <laughs> That's actually pretty crazy that I won. Oh, no. Okay, I'll just make it next to his base. All right, there we go. This one is misplaced. I think I misplaced another one. I just had a feeling that one of them was misplaced. I just don't know which one it was. Uh, let's see. Oh, should move these away. No, he denied my base. That is very cruel. Okay. Let's go. Shoot a few of these. Get these a little bit closer. So they do friendly fire. There we go. Oh, I almost got that. Okay, that would have been nice. 
Now, I do quite literally have every base on the map now. Wait, he was taking that one too. Okay, I'll take it as well. Why not? We, we, sh we share the bases on this map, okay? Now, I have 103 SUVs. I do not have enough SUVs to saturate all my bases. I can tell you guys that much. Uh, but yeah, wait, he's flying away. <laughs> Where is he going? It's just the Oh, okay. He wasn't placed. So I was like, why is he running away from a command center? But no, he was just uh, replacing his CC. All right, there we go. See what he has up here. That's a sensor tower I can kill, actually. That looks pretty nice. Okay. I'll just see just right here. Let's see. Yeah, I actually have a few more, a few more Vikings than him here. It is really hard to count, but I do have a few more. And I have an extra upgrade on him, too. Okay. I wonder what my income is at this point. It's probably not too insane because my SCVs are like split all over the place. But it's uh, definitely good enough. There we go. Let's get these out as well. GG. And <laughs> look at the minimap here, guys. The minimap here looks absolutely beautiful. I'm not even mining from these bases. Oh, actually, the gas income is sick. 1600 gas a minute. That's really not bad. Uh, but yeah, I literally, this game, I just outgreeded them. You guys see it, what I was talking about. I. You know, I played well, of course. I didn't make any critical blunders. The unit's loss is good. But I really just won because I had more stuff than him because of the opener. He had no idea I played CC first. Let me get away with it. I probably had way more SCVs. Let's just double check. Maybe maybe the build sucks so you don't even have more SCVs. But I think we should have a decent amount more. Let's see. 50 against 37. I, I killed 3. 50 against 40. I was 10 workers up, guys. Look at this. Look at this lead I got just by playing CC first. Just by doing a greedy build. That was awesome. Let's try another build for the next game. All right, game number two on Dara C. Now, the CC first was obviously a massive success. Now, I'm going to try to go for a gasless expansion. In case you guys are wondering, isn't CC first expand also gasless? True, but I'm, I'm not sure this term was just invented back in Wings of Liberty. A gasless expand means that you go for a barracks expand before gas, which, once again, also no one does. Doesn't really work in TVT. But I found it in a very intriguing build because sometimes it feels like there might be something to be said for it. You... On some maps, you really can be safe playing Gas's Expand. Like, for example, here. I, I might have messed it up. I'm not sure. I, I think maybe a Reaper can pass here. But on some maps, you can wall it off with a Depot, a Barracks. And then you only have to defend the front with the with the, yeah your units, basically, making it relatively easy to defend. Now, the main problem is that Terran gets tech units very fast. If you get tank pushed, having played Gas's Expand... Uh, you're just not going to be very happy. Like, you're going to have a bunch of Marines that don't have Stim yet because you played Gasless. Uh, it's going to be a tough, uh, you know, tough thing to deal with. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Gasless expand, but instead of making more barracks, I'll actually try to go for air. But yeah, I think surprisingly the CC first build actually flows better. So just to remind you guys, I know the CC first looked insane in that game, but you should by any means die to everything. Like I was really lucky that he just didn't do anything at all and let me vibe out with my CC first. But you should by any means just die to everything they do. Even one Reaper is going to be problematic. Two Reapers show up. Doesn't even matter what they do. Proxy Reaper, Reaper from home. Proxy Marauder, you know. Actually, Proxy Marauder, maybe you could deal with with a bunker if, if you would scout, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like everything is just a disaster. Uh, and then the worst part is that if you're trying to not be greedy, you're going to have to cut your advantage, right, by making stuff like bunkers, doing stuff like scouting, and then you're not even going to be that far ahead anymore, even if it's a normal game. So, yeah, it is a tricky one. Now, let's see how the gases expand uh, pays off for me. These things are always so weird. They look like mega scorpions. I always feel like I'm being spotted on the map. So it's like these weird critters here. Now, once again, we're not being scouted. Uh, if he would do some cheese because of the last game, I would totally understand it. Let's see what we're going to find here. So it's just a normal double gas once again. All right. Now, this SCP is basically a sacrifice. I am going to lose this like in, in two seconds, uh, quite literally, I think. But my, I mean, my base is safe already. Wait, he's not actually going to kill this with his Reaper? I mean, he sent his Reaper across the map, looks like. Oh, here we go. The gas is expanded instead of the CC first. He never saw it coming, guys. That was the real mind game. He was expecting a CC first again. Absolutely destroyed in the mental warfare, guys. There you go. But here you can see the timings, by the way. CC started when my CC finished. Okay. That's the timings on this. Now, I'm going to make a reactor there. This is very risky, I want to say. Um... Hmm. Now, yeah, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with all the stuff that's coming out. He might, I, I actually should have kept the SUV here to see if he was making a reactor or not. No, I should keep my Marines on the bunker. And then just, yeah, reactively go up here. That's the plan. 
And if he throws grenades, we just micro against them. I think with three marines, I should be able to out micro that. Yeah, there you go. So now he's gonna go here, but I do have the bunker. He might be tempted to drive by. Uh, but that's actually gonna be okay. I, I feel like we're definitely holding okay so far. Uh, I think we're pretty lucky that we, I didn't plan this, by the way. But we got a map where I could actually wall this off very well. Uh, now, there is a trick with Reapers. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the stuff I was talking about. This I cannot defend. So I'm gonna have to go up on my ramp here. And basically use my SCVs to form a meat shield. I'm gonna get one Reaper. Let's see if I can get another one. My barracks is very far away, which is unfortunate. Let's see if I can get these guys to repair each other. Look at that love triangle right there. All repairing each other. That's fantastic. We're gonna get another Reaper. And another one. There we go. Okay, this hold is not bad at all, actually. I really thought this was gonna be way worse. Like, I know I've lost SCVs, but keep in mind, I'm doing a greedy build. I have way more SCVs than you should normally have. And now he's gonna come up here. I'm gonna be able to target that Hellion. And at this point on, his rush is effectively held. Now, I know how to micro these pretty well, so we're not going to be in trouble. And I have a reason the bunker so that Hellion can't actually escape. Here you go. He dove back around, but obviously uh, we're going to be totally fine. But now, are we ahead? I'm not sure. It, I, I really like that he did decide to put on some aggression because the last game, he really gave it to us for free. So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue the greed. So I'm going to skip all of my Marines. And just get a third CC instantly. Extra gases. And maybe this game I could pull out like the... Actually, I would I would like to play Bio. I was, I was going to say, uh, I would pull out the double armory style. Super, super greedy. But it might be fun if I actually play a little bit of Bio as well. So you guys get to see both. Now, I'm not even making a tank here. So I'm actually being even greedier than I, uh, than I had planned for. I, I was planning on making siege tanks. But I guess even that... Uh, you know, is, is, is too greedy for me. Now, normally, a very important thing in TVT that I'm skipping here. I'm actually not even sure if I did it in the last game. I might have done it on autopilot. But a very important thing um, is that you scout with your Marines. Like, you always put one Marine everywhere. Marines are not as important in this matchup as... Um, I'm actually going to do the mech stuff, by the way. Anyway, they're not as important as high-tech units. So if you lose four Marines spotting on the map to see a tank push, it's 100% worth it. Uh, but I'm going to be greedy, and I'm not going to do any of that at all. And just hope that it works out uh, for us. There we go. Triple CC. Uh, double Armory. And now my plan is to hit either a... Oh, this is actually a big problem, by the way. I didn't think about it. This reactor, if it gets siege, it's just gone. I'm gonna fly my bear, my factory, or sorry, my starport all the way there. But it could just get sniped and then it would have been a massive waste of time. Uh, but we'll see. I'm just gonna try to take this base as fast as I can. It fits both the greed and it's also safer at the same time. So I think it just works for everyone here. Uh, like I said, and like we saw in the last game, Jason is just a hardcore macro player. So I'm just not expecting anything too crazy here. Um... Yeah, I feel like normally I would be a little bit more afraid. Maybe there could be like a tank drop in the main or so. But from Jason, I expect mostly standard stuff. I could actually use these to um, move around a little bit. Get some scouting done. You know, or not necessarily scouting. Try to pick off units. But if, if I see his army move out, that would be very fortunate. Let's see. Oh, actually, that's perfect. Oh, but we're getting attacked at the same time. Ooh, can I survive this? I'm not actually sure, you know. This looks like a rough one. I also misclicked my tanks there. He has another... Yeah, we're actually just gonna die here straight up. Alright, so... I guess we now know the answer. Uh, does this build work? The answer is no. I had uh, absolutely no units. And I know I was greedy. But I'm actually convinced that wasn't even a huge part of it. I don't think I would have had much more. So gases expand. is completely cancelled, guys. Now we know uh, why it was cancelled to begin with. Let me snipe that raven. Now, I'd love to try, but this one should just be absolutely done and dusted at this point. Uh, I, do, I do have my third alive, which is great. I have a, a raven and a cyclone alive. Is there anything I could possibly do here? I actually don't think so. I think this game is actually absolutely over. But yeah, this build, you can just clearly tell. Uh, I think I skipped one tank, right? If I had one tank more, would I have held this? Absolutely not. So now we know that this build just does absolutely not work. Let's see. Oh, he's actually sieged there. Interesting. Let me just siege this spot over here. Ooh, that's annoying. Yeah. All right, yeah. You know what? GG. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, we should be massively down in supply. 59 against 107. Let, let's, let's just quickly take a look at the start of that. Um, when he actually pushed out. 
So, I mean, he, he missed my... This is actually a bit unfortunate. He missed these. But you can tell he is up two siege tanks. So he would have been one tank down. Uh, two SCVs up. Let's look at the production. Production is actually pretty similar, I think. Um, I made two armories. He made two barracks. Fair enough, right? So he basically just has a 10 supply lead. I think I would have had one more siege tank. And I could have had... I want to say four or six more marines. But we have to be realistic here. If I did make those extra six marines, then I don't have this command center. And he already had it too. So I really think we were just like a little bit behind. It's really not crazy, but we were a little bit behind after, after the start. So gas has expand. Probably not it. CC first was a dub. Let's move on to the Reaper expand. All right. Game number three. Tropical sacrifice. We're going to Reaper expand without scouting, which is very greedy. But it's definitely the best build of the three. So if my theory is correct that Jason just doesn't cheese... We should be pretty good here. And now I'm actually going to show you guys the reverse side of being greedy. Because a lot of people think when you're being greedy is that you're doing, you know, 4cc before anything reasonable. Uh, stuff like that. But a lot of cheeses are also greedy. I noticed throughout my career that a lot of time if I went up against um, a very cheesy player, people would be scared to play against them. You know, they do their safest build. What I notice is very often... They will die themselves if you just cheese them back. Because, first of all, they're just not used to being cheesed because they're always the aggressor, right? Uh, but besides that, a lot of cheeses are just greedy. If you do a cheese that's greedy, for example, the one I'm going to do now, it's just going to hit harder. If you don't have to make a few safety marines before you're all in or whatever, uh, you're all in, it's just going to hit harder. So if you want to do the best cheeses, they're always greedy cheeses. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. The build I'm going to do is... 6 Hellion Marauder drop. Uh, which is... Yeah, pretty much everything I've explained. You open very greedy. Uh, you can't afford to scout. There's no margin for that at all. There's no budget, I guess I should say. Um, but then at the same time, because you have those extra units and you have a lot of SCVs behind it, it's the kind of cheese where you can actually kind of transition. But if I would SCV scout, if I would make a safety marine, my build would hit later. It doesn't have a great transition. It makes all the difference, really. So for this build, uh, this is actually the first like real legit build I'm doing here because... If you want to do this cheese, you actually have to be this greedy. If you surrender to doing this cheese, this is the way you have to do it. You have to be greedy with it. So with the other builds, I obviously had options to be less greedy. But now uh, you actually just have to avoid scouting. And like I said, Reaper expand without scouting, guys. If you want to be legit, absolute no-go. You cannot be doing this. Uh, Korean pro gamers do like it a lot because they do like to, you know, take risks and kind of play mind games against each other like oh surely he's not gonna proxy reaper on this map and then try it uh, but even without proxy reaper it's a pretty tough build to make work um actually i should send it to my natural just in case a reaper pops up here and obviously to keep my maximum greed out Gre greedy players don't scout guys come on we don't scout i'm a greedy player we don't do stuff like that um yeah the only thing that's a little bit difficult to hear is that i'm not sure oh we are being proxied okay there we go now let's see guys Let's see if I can defend the undefendable. This should be 100% over. But who knows. He's not he's not targeting the Reaper yet. That's a big mistake by him. Oh, really big micro mistakes by Jason going down here. Let's see. Okay. I'm actually going to go for freaking double heli. And this is actually insane what I'm doing. Yeah, that's really insane. Uh, wait, did I killed this Reaper. I think. Wait, I'm going to surround him. He's not paying attention. Okay. And more Miss Micro from Jason. Can I get that one too? No, not quite. Okay. I mean, I can't believe I'm even making this freaking starport, by the way. Oh, that's almost dead. Let's see. Yeah, you know, this was the best hold ever. And I'm not going to credit myself for it. It's a massive amount of Miss Micro by him. But this is as good as it could ever be. Uh, so I'm really not going to complain about this. I'm going to have two Hellions here. If he tries to jump up, he's actually going to be in trouble, I think. Oh, he does have four. Okay, I don't need to... I mean, I'm, Hellions are actually pretty comfortable to micro against Reapers. You just... Basically, you snipe them from afar. You keep them out of range. So, you can't get jumped on. That is the entire idea. And that that's every principle you have to stick to. Until you have enough Reapers that you can just... Uh, or enough Hellions that you can just dive in and kill them. Now, this really... And I'm not kidding. This might have been... The best proxy reaper hold ever i had absolutely nothing to deal with it uh and it, it still worked so yeah i can only be super happy that should have been an instant loss but you know we microed pretty well he made some 
you know, honestly blunders with the micro. Uh, and we can be happy with that because now we have a good chance to advance to the next round where we're going to play a, a really high tier pro. Obviously, you don't want to get too excited because we still have to win the game. Oh, this is actually going to be a bit annoying here. Uh, he's going to scout with his barracks. This is not an uncommon move at all. But it is really good against my build because I am uh, going for a follow-up cheese, right? Okay. There we go. Now I have enough Hellions, I think. Yeah, okay, he's staying too long, and that's gonna cost him all of these Reapers. There we go, just like I said. So he, he might have actually had three barracks proxied. I'm not 100% sure, but that was a lot of Reapers he had. Let's try to get these all repaired. Uh, no, don't, don't waste energy on that, please. That's actually a, a little bit annoying. Might as well go for the Raven right away at this point. There we go. Wait, he's actually gonna lose the barracks. That is a, a big deal. And now we're gonna go for it. He should not die to this because he scouted it. Um, I would say that I'm definitely very far ahead in this game because he lost all the Reapers and didn't kill someone who went Reaper expand, which is insane. But he should have a Cyclone behind the wall or maybe a tank and a Viking, something like that. So he could survive. If there's no wall, he should definitely die. Let's see. Okay, so he has... He, oh yeah, he does have three command centers. Okay. Yeah, he, he has more than I thought, you know? He has more than I thought. This is still going to be a game. I guess, um, in the end, the Reaper expand... Wait, oh. I was like, where, why the hell are my... my uh, where did my Marauders go? But I actually did drop them out on accident. Um, now, how am I gonna finish this one off? I think the smartest idea for me is to actually go for a cheesy follow-up. Like, I wanted to go for that uh, cheesy follow-up to my first build. I might as well finish it with a cheese as well, having used my greedy opener. Um, how can I use this medevac, though? That is what I'm wondering about. I'm gonna use my uh, early tech advantage because he like because he cheesed me. This game changed and uh, changed entirely, of course. But I'm gonna use my early tech advantage to go for a second starport and do like an air control in. As you can see, he was still building an add-on on that, so his even though he is 3 CC, which seems great for him, he's just not gonna have a lot of stuff. Uh, simply put, like I'm just gonna have way more stuff than him, most likely. At the front, he will be able to defend. I just hope his Viking is out of position so he can maybe... No, it's a Cyclone. Okay. Actually, yeah, no, I did see that Cyclone before, right? So his barracks are still hanging there. Which means that he's probably playing mech again. Uh, which in turn means that he is probably going to die to my attack. Because he's not going to have any Marines. I'll have more Raven energy than him. I should be able to kill him. And I think I have chosen the perfect follow-up here. And I know I'm predicting very far in the future because I still have to go and attack attack him. But uh, this does feel pretty good here. I do need to make sure I have an appropriate amount of Vikings. I think I'm just going to skip a few SUVs. Make more Vikings from that. And then we'll just uh, go for it. Now he has an eBay as well. His build does look a little bit weird to me. Um... I guess I can just scout around the map a little bit for some hidden expansions, why not? Uh, my army looks super weird, by the way. The one medevac, maybe it doesn't look weird to you guys, but this is not what I would usually have uh, at 7 minute 30 in the game. Like, two random rotters usually don't make those against Terran. Uh, one Cyclone, four Marines very early on. And yeah, the one medevac that's just chilling at home because my opponent was defending his base properly. Uh, not, not the most standard here, but my army is pretty massive. And the most important part here is that I have uh, a million interference matrixes. And that means I will be able to disable all of his siege tanks pretty much. I, I would guess if he has two factories, he could at most have six siege tanks. I'm kind of expecting it to be four or five, but it could actually be... Uh, it could actually be six, technically, if he got that thing very fast. Now let's see what he has here. He has an army that is completely matrixable. So I'm just going to go for it instantly. Did I get all of them? Almost all of them, okay. Well, it's a bit of a close one because he does still, uh, he is still shooting. Let's see, let's get all the tanks at least, make sure. All right, there we go. Yeah, my armor looks massive, okay. Now, this one was definitely a close one, guys. He was really not as far behind as I thought. I would even say he was ahead, uh, but he was just being very greedy. Fourth command center. Didn't make a single barracks unit, three factories. I think if he was less greedy, he could have defended. Uh, but yeah, we got away with greed.
And I showed you guys that sometimes it's the right thing to do. Maybe if I did a proper defensive build, I would have gotten a bit shaky. I would have missed my crowd. But here, I knew it was a hopeless situation. So I just did the best I could. And it ended up working. And that means we're going to move on to round number four of the ESL Open Cup. Where I believe Shadow is waiting for us. A 6-6 European Protoss. That's MMR, by the way, not height. Even though he is pretty tall. Anyway, let's do it. Alright, here we go. Our first Protoss of the day. And by far best opponent yet. I think Shadow did make the playoffs in DreamHack Europe, or barely didn't. In any ways, he was top 20 in Europe, which uh, these days is, is actually very difficult to achieve. So, gonna be a tough one. And of course, you guys guessed it, I'm gonna be opening with a CC first, uh, which is... No one really uses it. I've seen it a few times on streams, kind of with like a meme build or so. I've seen no one really use it seriously against Protoss in a while. I think... It was like, I feel like it was never super popular against Protoss, but back in the day, people definitely played it sometimes, you know, back in Wings of Liberty and stuff, when people didn't really know what builds were good, early hard of the swarm as well, maybe. Uh, but now I'm gonna bring it back, and hopefully I dominate so much that I see all you guys play CC first in all your games. Actually, if you lose LMR to a cheese, it's not my fault, okay? Don't, don't blame me, guys, I, I was just the messenger. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go play CC first. Against Protoss, it's kind of similar to the challenges I play normally. What sucks against Protoss is that Protoss has very strong aggression if they want to. Um, and the worst part about it is, is that it can go to your main in the form of a Prism or Blink Stalker. So no matter what build you do, it must always be able to defend, uh, you know, really heavy aggression. Because they can also do it on a whim. Like they could open Blink normally and then see you're doing something like this and go for a 4 gate. Um, so yeah, this is definitely going to be the hardest part, defending the aggression. Now, I'm going to go for a 3 racks. I could actually decide to go for double gas here. Um, you know what? I think I'm planning to play CC first in game number 2 as well. So what I'm going to do this game is I'm going to see what his response is. If his, re if his response is to make some kind of tech unit, like maybe like a Colossus drop, then we'll follow it up by playing double gas next game. If this works out perfectly fine, uh, then I'll just do the same thing again. Though I do have to say, players at this level, they're very good at adapting. So he didn't just see the CC first, he just scouted that I was doing a 3 racks. So if he would go for a reactive Colossus drop or so, uh, it would just be fantastic for him. Like, Colossus Drop is insanely good against this uh, Disruptor as well. Like, there's really barely anything you can do because my tech is just so late and Marines are absolutely terrible against Colossi. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe we get lucky. Who knows? I do have a slight ping advantage. We're playing on the East server where I have... What is it? 63 ping. And he probably has... Maybe like a hundred or so or a little bit more. So we have a small ping advantage. Probably not going to be the most meaningful compared to playing on the, you know, the laggier servers like West or Central for him. But I'll take any advantage I can get, guys. Any dub here would be absolutely fantastic. If we win this game, by the way, we would get the grand prize of playing against Dark. If you guys don't know who Dark is, I think I might have mentioned it at the start somewhere. Uh, yeah, world champion Zerg. Probably the best Zerg in Korea at the moment. He won a Dream Act this year. Just absolutely, you know, brutally insane player. So if we get to that part, it's going to be uh, a little bit sketch. But it is going to be fun. We did beat uh, Solar as well the last time. Or we took a map of him, I should say. We didn't quite beat him. But we took a map. Now, ooh. Actually, this could be a bit funny. Okay. Yeah, I need to, I need to fix that depot. Hmm. I guess I'll just make one tech lab. I'll just give these three marines at the home. And then move across with this. I'm just scaring him, really. That's all I'm doing. There we go. And maybe now I can do a sneaky move out. Yeah, it's probably too late. I was thinking about going behind this adept like this and walking into the base. I mean, realistically, we do have to make something happen. So maybe it's not even that crazy. Maybe I'll just go for it and see. I did at some point have a sick build in TVP with gases expand, by the way. It was uh, a two base massive tank banshee push, pretty much. Let's see, his adept is here. Okay, yeah, I think he forgot about it for a second. Let's go. Yeah, it did look like he forgot about it. And I'm actually gonna kill it, looks like. I did miss a unit on the minimap there. I was trying to micro both at the same time. Uh, but I actually wasn't able to kill that one, so that's a little bit of a shame. Now, should I... Scan. Normally, I don't, I don't like scanning in videos, because you guys need to know that scanning is really not as good as most people think it is. Um... 
Scanning is usually a massive waste of money. You'll scan their base to see a gateway being chronos for 200 minerals, you know. But here, I have so little info. I might have to. But that doesn't really fit with the greedy theme, right? So uh, I think we're just going to try to defend whatever he has uh, without a scan. Now, this bunker is 100% a must, by the way. This is not me not being greedy. That's just me not wanting to die for free because that would happen 100%. So we might still die for free even with the bunker, right? So... Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. That's why it's there. I'm not walling off my natural because we don't have tanks. Normally, walling off the natural is very good. But I don't have tanks here. I would say we got away with the CC first, but not completely yet. Because we don't know what is coming. We don't have... Like, I haven't even seen... Maybe he's on one base, you know. There's an observer here. So that means... Uh, that is actually a twilight-timed observer. Uh, if that sounds ridiculous, I'm sorry. But yeah, that is a twilight-timed observer. So now we know he's playing uh, Blink, most likely. Um, maybe I should send one marine forward to see if it's coming. Let's see. There's actually nothing here. I, I feel like he... He's probably playing a very normal game, actually. That's the vibes I'm getting from this. And, and once again, that might sound ridiculous to you guys, because I haven't seen anything, but that is kind of what it seems like. So if we're not being attacked, I'm just going to skip your unit, some units to make a, a third CC real fast. And send out a drop. There we go. Now, I would really like to play... Oh, I actually, I said I was going to play CC first next game, but I really wanted to play uh, Hidden Expansion as well. I think the next map is Cosmic Sapphire, which is the map with the golds. And I would love to play Hidden Expansion on that. Uh, let's drop some more mules. There we go. I was considering scanning again, but I have to stay strong, guys. We have to stay strong and not scan at all, okay? Let's see if he has that base over there. Bam, bam, bam. Probably doesn't have this one, if I had to guess. Yeah, he probably has the other third base. It's more common. Okay. Now, I could also just go for ghosts instantly. Like, even, like, skip making a basic army and just go straight away for ghosts. And see, ah, so he did go for uh, Colossi. That does make the most sense. Like I said, he probably adapted. Uh, I think he played Blink into Colossus. That seems like uh, what it is. If I had to guess right now, he has about eight Stalkers in his main base, two Colossus there. And the Colossus are the ones moving back and forth to... Uh, you know, defend where they have to. And the Stalkers are there to snipe the drops. Did I see an Observer? No, right? No, I thought I saw an Observer there for a second. So my Ghost Academy is already coming online very fast. Be before 7 minutes. Or pretty much exactly 7 minutes. Uh, yeah, let's make some Ghosties then. Now, I would love to make a 4CC. Just, you know, it, it, it's really... Today we're really just testing the limits, right? So I'm going to make a 4CC 7 minutes. Which is actually super fast. Against Zerg, you can, you can maybe do it a little bit, you know? But against Protoss, no one would make everything forced to see that fast. Like, this is actual insanity. That's also the funny thing about playing greedy. If you win a game while playing greedy, your opponent's like, holy frick, I got out macro. But in reality, you know, you just make your forced to see way too fast. And it's kind of funny. Um, now, I think I'm going to try to just max out on... Um, on... 1-1. One, one. I was going to say 3 bases. That's obviously not what's going on. Uh, I'm going to max out before getting my armor and just try to hit a really massive timing attack. Now, I'm a little bit afraid of playing against Disruptors. Disruptors is not my favorite unit to say the least. So if you do play against those, that could be a slightly frustrating experience. I'm going to punk it here. Get my basic static defenses. I'll drop some more mules, of course. There we go. Hey, there's a fake prism in my main. You guys see that? That prism wasn't even real. And now there's three slow zealots walking into my base. This was a, this was a very interesting turn of events, I have to say. This, the, the, the freaking fake prism into the slow zealots walking into my base. Now, I, I have 74 SCVs already, guys, which is pretty awesome. Normally, I really don't get there that fast. Let's see... Now, normally in TVP, uh, and that's another greedy part, normally at TVP you actually stop at about 70 workers because you can't really beat a Protoss army uh, unless your army is also massive. Like, it's it's really more of a numbers game. Like, Protoss units are too efficient. You can't really out-micro them that much. So, I'm really going to try to go up to, you know, 85 SCVs to maximize the greed. Maybe get, like, a 5th CC or something as well. Still, I haven't done a single scan, I believe. I also have a fake bunker. Uh, there's actually nothing in there, so maybe it will scare him off. So yeah, he has disruptors. That's what I thought. Now I'm going to scan just so I know if I can take the fight or not. I feel like my army is pretty big, honestly. Uh, I guess my greed did pay off a little bit, at least. Right, let's put the marauders in the front. 
That's a nice EMP. Because disruptors, you always have to keep pulling back. And normally you can't really fight straight up like this. But uh, I'm really tempted to just go for it at this point. Ah. Maybe I can actually get into his natural here. Yeah, he has a turbo battery overcharge. Let's do a little bit of splitties. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of splitties. It's really hard to... Oh, can I kill that freaking cannon or the pylon, please? It's actually sick. I feel like my greed actually paid off because my army was way bigger compared to him than it normally would be, which is just crazy. Like, I'm actually going to be able to get all of those colossus as well. Okay, let's land these. I got all of the Colossus. I might get all the Disruptors too. Let's get that one. Yeah, I did get that one. In the end, we didn't kill him with it, but that's fine. Uh, keep in mind... I, right now, my, actually, my economy could be working out for me. Because I have... You know, we traded. Uh, but I still actually have a lot of money. Which normally I don't have against Protoss. Now, I don't have any units though. Yeah, this is the problem. The fight was so good. But it was still not good enough, looks like. Against the, against the Disruptors. Did I have shells? Oh, I did have concussion shells. Okay. He has one disruptor. Wait, there's another... Okay, I was gonna say, there's no way he fired it blindly. That would have been insane. Let's try to get a fifth base as well. And a sixth and seventh. I'm uh, I'm actually enjoying just YOLOing the macro game, by the way. Because normally against Protoss, I play so scared, you know. Uh, but this game, I'm actually just kind of winging it all. And it, it's feeling better than normal, really. Uh, still not completely in my comfort zone, but uh, it's feeling better than normal, which is important. Let's get my EMP upgrade going to... I'll probably make two more guys. Uh, Medivax. Or oh, girls, I guess. Because um, I, when I'm maxed, I do definitely want to have a few more. There's another observer there. Let's kill that one too. Hey, don't kill my base. It's rude as hell. I'm going to have to cancel that one. It's a little bit annoying. I'm missing one. Yeah, I didn't hotkey one of those, I see. Okay. I'm gonna send all my uh, light units there. And just use my marauders to defend this part. Try to get my sixth base at the same time. There we go. Oh, he did... Does he see that? I think he barely doesn't see that, actually. That is pretty funny. Okay. I need to get my uh, plus two. Liberators without plus two are useless. Uh, I mean, not useless. I love you guys, but... Not, not, not the strongest. Probably better options out there. So I'm gonna lose a few of my 90 SCVs, but... You know, realistic... I mean, oh, I still have 88 actually after all that. Oh, I misclicked there. Definitely meant to send those out. Now let's get my base up here. Uh, I also need to get range for my libs. Without range is gonna be a little bit of a struggle. Now you can see my, my army actually looks very small, I feel like, but... I am maxed, so... You know. Okay. Might actually be going for a little bit of a base trade here. That's a recall because he saw my units there. Yeah, my army looks tiny, dude. This is a maxed army when you have 92 SCVs against the uh, freaking Protoss. Let's see. I guess we just get into the natural. He already used his recall, actually. So this is not uh, the easiest fight ever for him. He has so many units just stuck there. Okay. Ooh, there's DTs out on the map. Yeah. Not really going to be able to deal with those effectively. So I'll just have to kind of ignore it for now. There you go. EMP is nice though, for sure. And I guess I'll just send these back home. And... Oh! Okay. This fight is looking pretty awesome so far, actually. The micro is very good here. Okay! Okay! Guys! Please. No. I knew it. My, my, Actually, I lost because of my Vikings there. Uh, or no, I didn't lose the game. That's not what I meant. But uh, if my Vikings didn't exist there, I would have killed the Disruptors easily in time. But the Vikings were just like walking forward like that, which uh, actually cost me this is it, 20 supply units. Uh, but all in all, that went really well for me. I'm not sure where I put my... There we go. Uh, yeah, what sucks is that my 2-2 is so late. Um, if you guys didn't know... Liberators are insane with plus two because they two-shot stalkers. But before that, they are rather useless, actually. So, yeah, right now I just don't have very useful liberators, unfortunately. And I lost my most important base there. Let's see. He doesn't have a lot of disruptors here, so... Oh, he does actually have a decent amount. Oh, I actually didn't get any of them then, I guess. I probably felt like I got all of them because maybe I was close to. But I guess in the end I didn't. 
I guess we'll just go for uh, straight through the middle again. Let's go. Siege up here. Oh, oh no, what are my medivacs doing? Oh, it's because I had one freaking... Uh, that's what happens when you have like a few low HP bio units in the back. Oh, that's so rough. My units are not, not, not listening quite uh, quite well to me here, guys. I'll have to be honest. Okay, let's get some stuff in the main. That's a recall. I'm not quite sure what is being recalled. Yeah. I mean, he's losing a lot of stuff here, which is nice. Oh, he fired all of them! Does he have Does he have any left? Actually, not quite sure. Let's see that Liberator there. Can I go for anything here? I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna go for this. Oh, he's actually blinking on top. Ooh. Dude, my units are too low here. This is rough. There we go. Got a few units. Oh, there's another disruptor. There's a robo down here. How did disruptor keep getting there? That's kind of crazy. Okay. Yo, the liberators are looking fantastic here, though. Can he kill his own zealots? No? I mean, the liberators are doing good. I'm not quite sure about this one, guys. This actually ended up being quite an epic macro game. I've lost the advantages of my greed already because I don't have money. So I'm kind of tempted to say this one is not going fantastic, but maybe it is. Actually, I do have a lot of liberators, so I can send out some harassment. And I do have 5 CC, so I guess uh, all in all, I will be able to replenish my economy pretty fast. Let's get that out. It's also one of the first times you guys are seeing me like play proper games on, you know, regardless if I was greedy or not, this is the first time you guys are actually getting to see me play proper games on YouTube, I feel like. Uh, you know, first first time for everything. Let's try to get a siege there. Yeah, this map does not have like imbalanced liberator spots, sadly. So, some maps just have like, you know, these liberator spots that you can't reach, which are just insane. This map does not have them. Now, I am actually denying a lot here. Oh, he's actually kind of clicking those on accident. Oh, I can't. He also has a bunch of DTs on the other side, which is really annoying here. But my army is looking pretty big already. Not quite sure why I'm supposed to be saturating, though. Yeah, let's get that disruptor. That's nice. Uh -huh. I can siege that with my lips. And then I can just kind of chill. I, I don't actually have a ghost here, which make my liberators way worse. As you guys can probably imagine, um, if with plus two, they two-shot stalkers with an EMP, that makes it a one-shot. So that is pretty incredible, right? I like how he's just being held like hostage by three liberators right here. That is pretty funny. And I'll be able to go for all of these zealots too, which is very efficient. I left one ghost here. Ah, oh, I missed the EMP. No, I got it, actually. Um, I left one ghost here uh, to really just, yeah, farm that stuff. And now I'm going here. He's fighting before his army is here. I'm going to get a fat EMP on that. Yeah, these elves are really not going to be trading that well. There are two DTs that were perhaps slicing away a little bit too much for my taste. Uh, but still, I think it was good enough. And now maybe he doesn't have DTs left. Oh, that Liberator actually killed a freaking Disruptor as well, which is pretty sick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this lives going ham though. Okay, now I can dive on top of these and then send my reinforcement army to the other side. Target the pylon here. I know it looks like a good setup, but without the pylon. Oh, he blinked back. That's a mistake. I think he was actually about to kill most of those. But instead, uh, I actually got out with a decent amount. Yo, I actually didn't realize that those were still alive, by the way. That is pretty insane. insane. My army here is kind of weirdly small. I have to say. Like, I, not, not a single medevac, you know? Just like... Yeah, I guess I'll go in there at this point. Oh, he's recalling. Oh, no. I, it looked like a recall. Oh, it was a recall. It looked so bright. Because it was the snow, I actually couldn't tell. Yeah, this fight is going to go super well for me here. Absolutely insane. Every single disruptor dead. There we go. All right, guys. Uh, well, I mean, that had way more to do than being greedy. But I was really greedy this game. And it worked out perfectly. Normally in TVP... Um, in macro games, I'm actually not that great in TVP because you have to be scared for so many things. But this game, I just didn't give a flip. I was super greedy. I allowed myself to go all out in the macro, get 90 SCVs, and I actually had enough money to replenish my army, which was insane. Now, let's move on to game number two.
All right, game number two. Admittedly, at this point, I am getting a little bit tired. Uh, I've been playing and talking nonstop for, what is it, an hour and 15 minutes or so, hour and 20 minutes, not quite sure where we're at. Uh, but we still have a game to win, so let's freaking go. Well, if we win, we have a lot more games to win after that. Uh, I'm gonna play CC first again. I think it's just the greediest thing I can do against Protoss, and it's funny. Now, this map, I was really considering going for a hidden base at the gold, but I think the gold is a little bit too obvious. Um, it feels like at some point they're gonna scout the gold, but I'm not sure if they would scout. He would scout it if I put it like here, for example. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, Terran, Terran has a little bit of a weird gas spending curve. So early on you need a lot of gas, later on you don't need it that much. So the rich gas doesn't really help us. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. Like I guess it saves all the cost of the refinery and you know mining from it. But besides that, we don't really need the gas. Like if Protoss had the rich gas, that'd be insane. They get so many tech units out and stuff, right? That'd be crazy. But for us, at Asterids, if I make a hidden base here, you know, maybe that could actually work out pretty well. Now the problem is, where do I fit it in the build? Because I'm already gonna play CC first. If I also take a hidden base, I will really not have a single unit to defend, and. I have to imagine that my opponent is gonna be changing up his style a little bit because I think even without the fact that I won the game, it also felt like it was going my way after the start. Like I just had a lot of units, you know, uh, I, I reached max pretty fast and stuff. Now he's scouting me again with his probe. I'm gonna go for the three ranks again because now, now we have the 1-0 lead. It gives us a little bit of uh, playroom, right? So now I'm gonna do the same thing again. And if it, I mean, if it works again, it works. If it fails, then I can do another version next game and he not necessarily will realize that it's going to be different right away, right? I'm going to go for the three barracks. Though I, I guess technically he can just scout every version. It kind of depends on what time, what moment in the game he makes up his mind, right? Uh, hmm. Yeah, maybe, I, I guess we'll see. We'll, we'll adapt next game for now. We don't have to think about it yet because we still have to either win or lose this game. But next game we might definitely have to adapt. Let's see. It's one of the most annoying things about playing and non, you know, making a unit right away build is that your SUV gets harassed to death. That's always a little bit, a uh, little bit of a rough one. Now I got my three barracks up. I'm not quite sure when I took my gases last game, but I think it was probably this timing, roughly. Um, it would be really funny if, for example, Jason, I'm not sure if you guys felt the same, but I feel like Jason, he realized I was playing like a greedy only challenge. Because in the third game against me, he did a proxy reaper, which I never see him do. And it would be funny if Shadon realized I'm doing it too. Uh, which it's going to be harder to realize in TVP for sure. But he might like take the gold himself because I'm no he knows I'm not really scouting and stuff, right? So uh, that would also be pretty funny. Now I am going to make a bunker pretty soon. Maybe considering making it now. And I don't think I have enough money yet for it. I should chill out a little bit. I'm just afraid of like a stalker showing up. But to be honest, even if there is a stalker, I'll just make the bunker after and that's it. Oh, that was a really fast reaction time. Looks like they're still an adept anyway. I have the same nine marines that I had in the last game. So my build is pretty consistent. That is nice. I'm going to get my factory. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to go for it. I don't need to wall this off. I keep forgetting that with the CC first. Uh, you need one last depot, so I keep not having it walled off, which is a little bit unfortunate. But I haven't been punished for it yet in any way, so maybe it's not unfortunate at all. Maybe it's a bait. Maybe it's like, ah, now I'm going to make more adepts, and then he gets absolutely destroyed, you know, who knows. Um, so I'm going to run these marines in his base. Last time, oh, he saw me again. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's doing a really good job scouting. Uh, very good map control. He probably realized that his adept didn't run into my marines. So my marines were either at home or taking the long way around. I think it's about 4... Actually, I don't have to... I'm going to make the bunkers la as late as possible, which is probably about 4.20. Uh, because then... Uh, like, a bunker takes about 30 seconds to build. 4-gate blink should hit at 5 minutes. Let's see if this annoying probe is still here. Don't really like dealing with uh, annoying probes. Okay, so the probe is gone. Let's make an eBay. And it's 4.20, so we can make the bunker. And I'm really curious what he has... Uh, what he came up with for us this time, right? Because it could be anything. Like, it really could still be what I was talking about last game. It could be the Colossus drop. It could be the freaking, uh, you know, 4 gate blink that we always play against. It could really be anything at this point. So, who knows? I'm going to get these gases as well. Once again, I'm going to scan. I, I hope there's no DTs, though. That would actually be a little bit painful after I just dropped uh, a few mules right there. Let's see. I think these depots are relatively safe. 
Let's go. I just sent these marines back into the main. Um, and then I can't I can't afford medivacs yet. I actually don't have gas. I feel like my uh, wait I missed the observer this time maybe. Yeah, my gas were a little bit late, so I can't afford medivacs. I get to 50 SUVs so fast with this, by the way. It's actually really cool. That's the thing. Like if it, if it gets unpunished, it actually feels fantastic. If you don't get cheesed a lot, you guys should honestly be trying this out. If you do get cheesed a lot, I'm not so sure, but otherwise. So some more meals then. Guess we'll get a fourth or a third base. Now, I need to find the observer because I, I still want to get the hidden base, but... Um, yeah, I just, ha I just haven't seen the observer yet, so... Like, there has to be one at this point. Five minutes. The only way there's no observer is if he's playing Stargate, which would make absolutely no sense in this scenario, so... Let's see, let's check again. Quick check. There's something in my bay. Oh, yeah, there we go. He is actually doing the counter that I said. Yeah, th that, that's so funny that when it comes to playing against pro gamers, I can very accurately predict what's going to happen, right? Because I'm just used to the, you know, the proper decisions being made, I guess. Uh, this sounds a little bit rude, but yeah, I, I guess it is what it is. He um, adapted very fast to the last game. Now, I'm not quite sure if he has blink with it. Two. I'm gonna try to take this base still. Okay, there's no army here, so he probably has the other base again. Three marines. Yeah, you, now you can see how bad marines are against those things. Like, it's actually pretty crazy. He yeah, 100% has a Colossus here too, but we just don't know where it is. It could be... Oh, it's... Wait, does he not have... Oh, he does have a third base. I was gonna say. Okay. Well, those forces are gonna help me massively. That is a blunder by him. Let's freaking go. I was just talking about right decisions being made. That is 15 probes going down. <gasps> oh, he was not looking there for a second. He's playing very well, though. His multitasking is definitely on point. And this Colossus just really shred SCV super hard. I guess I'll make one Viking. I don't want to make it, but I'll do it. Come on. Maybe he's not looking? Ah, okay. Sometimes they just shift click and they just assume that you're not there, you know? That would have been ideal. Uh, I don't have money to make extra barracks because of this freaking Colossus drop. No, the misclick. Ah, that hurts. I did I did the... Not the worst mistake. That's lifting this disease, but the second worst mistake you can make. I actually don't have any marines here, okay. Yeah, it's time to build a turret here. Marauders do do very well against the Colossus head-on, though, so that is fine. Um, and now I can finally lift this here. So that was definitely a little bit of a mess. If I didn't kill those workers on his side of the map, I would have probably felt terrible about this. But now... Ah, I don't have a ghost for this timing yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just have to admit, guys, he's doing a really smart build. I, I, I think I got nothing, honestly. I think I got absolutely nothing here. Uh, but I'm gonna try till my last attack. I mean, I do have this base, you know. If he, if he for some reason doesn't kill it, or doesn't realize it's there, of course. The fact that it's not attacking me makes me think I probably rallied an SCV into him on accident. And no, it seems very logical for him to go and kill that. More meals. No, no, no. Especially not you guys. Yeah, he does have Blink as well. I wasn't sure if he was going to have Blink, actually, but he does have Blink as well. Okay. I mean, his hidden base could be my absolute savior. Who knows? Like, it's just... It, this place is just too narrow. I, I can't attack in because of the force fields. Like, there's absolutely nothing I can be doing against this right now. I just need to hope that he doesn't micro too well or leaves me alone a little bit too long. And, and that's it, right? There's a fourth Colossus now. Need to bring these guys in, though. Okay. Oh, oh. Well, let's see. He has a lot of force fields here. Yeah, the problem is he has the war prism. Oh, he actually failed the pickup. Oh, he's gonna lose the war prism here, maybe? No. Okay. I mean, we are slowly getting through there, which is surprising. He's not actually targeting my... Um, let's get the prism now. He's not actually targeting my... Uh, my Vikings with the Stalkers for very long. Wait, we're actually gonna break this? What? How did we just hold that? That is absurd. I, I attacked it like 500 force fields. Stop going away, please. Oh, nice. Free Disruptor. I attacked it 500 force field in four Colossus. Uh, I guess, yeah, he, he... Honestly, he probably didn't micro that well. I really was expecting a little bit better. I don't know if we're alive enough. But I am hella impressed now that we actually won that fight. Like, holy. Now, all that I can do in this game is honestly make a million SCVs and uh, pray. Like, I cannot 
realistically win this game because he unless he did it if he didn't remake probes all this time then definitely we could otherwise yeah we just don't have anything like you can tell i cannot afford units right now literally just like simple units are too expensive so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be greedy in the way that i'm just gonna get all my tech stuff out i'm getting my ghost my tutu i'm not making i haven't made a single unit in ages and here we just need to hope that we're not gonna get attacked i'm actually gonna make a semi-fake sensor tower i feel like a sensor tower always scares players off a little bit you know like it's really scared to go up against a sensor tower uh, i feel like so maybe if he sees the sensor tower he might back off a little bit more realistically he probably still has an observer floating around here though uh that i do not want to scan i only want to drop meals but i am making ghost already oh no that is gonna be they're slow again oh no he found me you hacker. Well, maybe he flew over it. I know. I, 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 it's a joke, by the way. In case you guys think I actually think he's hacking, that was a joke. But uh, that was that was my only hope. I guess I guess he must have flown over it with the prism, and I wasn't paying attention on the mini map. I mean, why the hell would I be looking at that? To be honest, but uh, yeah, that does suck. Our beautiful hidden expansion. I feel like that's the one that has been scouted twice, right? We also did it against the Zerg guy, the first one, and it was also scouted against him. So maybe those hidden bases are just not working very well, guys. At least not today. At least not today. Now I'm going to try to get 2-2 two, two up. I'm also going to remake my base. But... I would have to skip even more units, which is kind of crazy. Okay, he has an observer here. You could tell by his army movement. Not quite sure where it is, but... Oh, there's two free stalkers. Nice. A little bit of uh, micro. And maybe there is a chance... Ah, oh, it's DTs already. Didn't expect them that fast. Okay, that is a little bit rough. See, probably in both bases too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he actually didn't control the Nova, which is nice. A little bit of splitties again. You guys know me. Oh, he actually had even more than I expected. Yeah, GG. There you go. Um, yeah, four base Protoss taking a 15 and 6 and a say. I mean, this is honestly just uh, what do you call those? Um, I'm not sure. Like, he knew he won, so he was just making more bases. You know, kind of similar to what I was doing against Jason. But yeah, he chose a strategy. That I probably cannot defend, at least with how I was executing my strategy here. Maybe if I go for some extra gases or something, it's possible. So for the next game, I'm going to try to pretend I'm doing the same thing. Um, and then instead, going for extra gases, get like some tech out, maybe do a tank push, something like that. Anyway, it was still a cool game. We had an amazing hold this game still. That's a fountain game number three. All right, here we go. Game number three. CC first, number three as well. Uh, definitely fatigue kicking in a little bit here. My, my brain is struggling to come up with the right strategies at this point, but that is a part of the tournaments. So this game, I'm going to try to go for a CC first into double gas before second barracks. Though it might be smart to make a second barracks so I can like wall this off and he can't scout my main. But then I might be doing the thing where... I'm not being fully greedy, not believing in the build, and it's just going downhill from there, right? Because I don't really have... I'm not really either greedy or have a strong army. So I feel like neither of those would actually work out. So we are going to go for CC first number three here. Um, he has been scouting me after the gateway every single time. So that is yeah i mean that's very normal and this map is gonna arrive a little bit faster it's a map with a short rush distance so uh, the attack is probably gonna hit pretty hard uh, or the scout is gonna hit pretty hard and fast on this map gonna have to pull an extra SUV down to safeguard my command center which is not my favorite thing to do but it is what it is and there we go i do think cc first judging from this series because i don't really believe that even with the other you know, going to double gas, I can make it a good opener. But in game one, it was definitely very strong. So what I think is that maybe CC first is actually a good opener for a best of three to pull out once. A best of five to pull out once. Or in ladder, when you don't really meet um, the same opponents uh, all the time. Now he's leaving my base early. This is different than normal. We could be very lucky if he doesn't come back up if he only harasses me and doesn't go back up we could be lucky now nah, he's gonna scout again very diligent scouting by him well done <clears throat> can only compliment him for that because that's just uh that's just well played doesn't just assume i'm doing the same thing actually tries to get the confirmation and now he knows i'm doing something else which does make me a little bit scared because i'm not really sure what i'm supposed to do against the first adept with this 
Uh, but I guess we will find out. I think I'm definitely going to make a bunker, but I'm going to make my orbitals first. There we go. Orbital number one. Excuse me. And then orbital number two is going to come shortly after. And I can even make my factory before the bunker. Okay, that's maybe a little bit too crazy, but I can make it before. So maybe I should. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Fits the episode, right? Definitely fits the episode. Oh, by the way, guys, if you have suggestions what you would like me to do in the next ESL Cups as challenge, feel free to let me know, of course. I uh, am always looking for some new stuff that could potentially be fun. Let's get a bunker up here. And then my plan for this game is to do a massive two-base all-in off of the back of being greedy and having my SCVs a little bit faster. I think I should get my fourth and fifth barracks a lot faster with this stuff as well. Um... Let's see, he's not arriving with the Adept yet. It's actually surprising me a little bit. Okay, so he, he's coming now. He's going to be able to kill one of my SCVs. I actually walled it in this time, which is great. Uh, now we're going to suffer from the, the map here a little bit. On Moon Dance, you can always shade your Adept because it can just go in the back. Like, you can't actually catch the Adept here, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, but it's good for him to abuse that trick here. Now, I did, I did survive decently. Uh, an Oracle would be problematic here. But judging on what he's doing so far, and because I'm doing CC first again, I just don't think it's going to be an Oracle. Oh, he's attacking me with two Adepts. He's taking a lot of damage for it, though. So I'm not even sure if I mind it that much. Now, how can I fake him out here? I'm trying to think of anything I can maybe build in the front to fake him out. That would be nice. I'm just not quite sure what it would be. I'm going to go for a Cloak Banshees here. And thanks. And then, like I said, behind this, I'm going to try to hit a really hard... Oh, no, it is an Oracle. Oof. I guess I was actually a little bit too greedy this time. I, I, did, I would never expect the Oracle here, to be honest. Even if I wasn't playing greedy. I mean, if I wasn't playing greedy, I'd probably have stuff in place. But uh, I would have never expected the Oracle out of, here, uh, out of him here. This really seemed like... Uh, you know, he's been playing Twilight and Robo all the time. I really thought it was going to happen again. Now I'm almost sad I didn't do my three racks, but there's always a chance he did it reactively. Not quite sure on the Protoss timings, but there's always a chance he did it reactively. Now making these Banshees is not super smart. Because Banshees get a hardcore shut down by Stargate. But I just want to have something that distracts him. While I'm setting up for my big two base all in, basically. That's the plan. Here we go. Let's get the second Banshee up. Another question, guys. If you guys are still watching... Uh, I mean... It's probably going to be a biased answer at this point if you guys are still watching. But would you guys prefer if I cut these into like smaller episodes? I'll probably ask this in, in the comments as well. Because this is something I would... Uh, you know, really... Uh, I could really use your help on, I should say. Because out of this... Like, this video has been absolutely eternal. I also could get four 30-minute videos out of this, for example, you know. Uh, and 30 minutes is my average length. Yeah, I'm just getting absolutely ruptured by one Oracle. This is the kind of stuff that you can die to against Protoss if you're greedy. I mentioned it against Protoss. You need to be ready for so much aggression. And here, I'm just going to be dying to a simple Oracle because I was a little bit greedy. Uh, I wasn't even that greedy, but I was definitely a little, little, little bit greedy, right? And uh, I was instantly punished. Now, I could still hit a really strong attack. I lost a lot of SCVs. Normally, if I lost that amount of SCVs, I would be absolutely in the gutter. But at this point, uh, I still have 39 SCVs, which is really not that bad, considering what I lost. Now, sadly, these Banshees are going to do nothing, uh, and are probably going to be a bit of a waste of money. If you're wondering why I'm not going to use them with my army instead, it's because they just don't do a whole lot of damage, uh, and they die really fast, so uh, that is why. Oh, I accidentally had a Marine in the hotkey. For a second, I thought I couldn't cloak, and I was like, wait, what? That's not supposed to be the case. I'm actually going to go into the back base. I feel like that's the least likely, whereas Phoenixes and stuff are. So the biggest chance for me to do damage. Yeah, there we go. This looks nice. He's going to come with his Phoenix squad, most likely, and clean me up. But uh, that's already eight probes going down, so that's really nice. There we go. The Phoenix squad has arrived. I think we killed nine. Oh, I will barely got that. Or, 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 yeah, didn't get it uh, before the battery healed it. But we actually got a pretty much full mineral line. So they did as well as they possibly could have. And I'm very happy. Now, I was greedy. Uh, my greediness has been washed away by his aggression dealing a little damage. But I'm still going to stick to the plan and try a massive two base all in here. That is what I'm going to go for. Okay, should I get... Not sure if I should be getting tech labs on those. That is going to take quite a while. Um, 
Let me kill these rocks. Oh, by the way, a lot of pe people ask why I kill the rocks. Uh, there's not really a purpose. The only purpose that there is is that you don't misclick on them later and lose your stuff. Uh, because your units are move commanding. Not but it can also happen to your opponent, so... If you would consider there's even chances to misclick, you might as well keep them alive. But I just like to kill them. It's just... It's just something to do, you know. There's not a lot to do for me in the early game of StarCraft. Usually you have a lot of APM to spare. Uh, only in the later game it gets really hectic and then you don't have enough APM. But early on, things are pretty easy. So you can just be, you know, killing rocks like that. And I'm going to be doing a massive SCV pool here as well. I'm going to bring all of these. Uh, now, I, I think I gave this tip before. But I'm going give, to give it again. If you play against Oracle, always send one unit in front. Like, you do not want to get your entire army. No. You don't know, do not want to get your entire army stasis, that's for sure. Let's see. He has a fourth base, guys. Oh, he does have Storm. Ooh. That went from happy to very unhappy very fast. Uh, fourth base. Fantastic news for me. Storm, however, is usually not all -inable. Again, Storm is better to like take a, a longer approach and basically just out-micro over time. Yeah, here, I'm going to have to push very deep. Because I'm obviously all inning. I can't afford to... Uh, you know, chill back even a second. Let him accu accumulate more storms and all that. Not not looking forward to it. Now, he does really have a high-tech army ball. Which tanks are usually decent against. He has disruptors and... Wow, he was actually also doing the greedy challenge here. Holy cow, guys. Yeah, he, he went Stargate. Oh, this is a bit of a crazy counterattack. He went Stargate and Storm and he has disruptors. That is actual insanity. There we go. Yeah, I think after that early game damage, I just don't have enough units here, though, I'm afraid. Especially with the Zealots coming in the back as well. Okay, now I'm in a good position. This is a good siege. Oh, I got a Templar. That's nice. Okay. Oh, these things are going absolutely ham here right now, though. There's no storms on top here, guys. There's not a single storm here. Okay, I need to back off. He, he's, he's doing a sandwich, but it's not very well synced. Is this the miracle, guys? The splitties? How's the splitties? The splitties are decent. He has one more storm, maybe or not. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, dodge. I dodge those. I'm gonna kill the last immortal. Keep in mind, I have absolutely nothing at home. Uh, I, but I think I might have broken him. It's super close. It's not over yet because he has all these probes, I believe. Yeah, that's a lot of zealots here. Though if he engages early, we might actually be able to do it. Let's freaking go. Okay, let's get this pylon down. Oh, he has a colossus. Do I have enough tanks? I don't think... Oh, I can actually uh, resaturate this. I don't have a lot of tanks. I think I have two. There's one more tank there. Yeah, okay. I mean, anything can happen at this point, but it's definitely uh, better than expected. He uh, botched the flank there, which is going to help us a lot. Oh, he does have two Archons. Here, I'm going to pull the SUVs back. So the SUVs tank. He's going to shoot the Disruptor, but it's not going to hit because we know how to do splitties. Um, oh, no, he does have a lot of Archons, though. He probably shouldn't be falling back here because the Archons would do an amazing job. Let's see. Can I target the Archons? One Archon down. Oh, the Void Ray is actually pretty crazy here, though. Let's get that last Archon. We did get it. But at this point, I think we might have ran out of steam. Uh, we killed a lot of workers, but probably not quite enough. Um, I'm going to try one more time. One more big wave. Try to resaturate this. Maybe with four Liberators, we have a shot. Who knows? Like, I killed a decent amount of probes, and it must also be, like, a little bit mined out on the main. Not quite, but a little bit. So, maybe there's one more shot. And I have to say, just like last game, even if this would be a loss, we've had some amazing moments, right? Like, the fact that we got this far after that start. I lost, like, 12 as we an Oracle. Like, I'm not kidding, guys. That usually just signs the game. Like, that's it, you know? Uh, so, the fact that we actually got this far is amazing. Oh, cannot lose these to a Void Ray. Neither this bad boy over here. Okay. Lift it, please. Okay, he's actually gonna come for me. Which is kind of surprising, actually. But I guess he's very confident here. Can we get the Void Ray? The Void Ray is annoying as hell. Not quite. Okay. He killed one of my libs. He did lose some units for it, though. And I guess the only way to do this is with one more final SCV pool, guys. See if I can actually make it happen or not. Would be beautiful. Not currently believing, but it would be beautiful. That's all I can say. Let's see. Put the Marauders in the front. Okay, he's, uh, he's intercepting these SCVs, but it's really not a huge deal, of course. Uh, it's just SCVs here, pretty much. Oh. oh! He actually moved a little bit too far forward, but I didn't punish him. Oh, for a second, I, th I thought I saw him go around there. 
That was a little bit weird. Okay, let's get these back into the bunker. Get these guys sieged over here. Um, I'm not sure where the army is, actually. I think it might be behind me. Let's see, I'll have to check for that. Okay. Yeah, he's recalling here. Oh, that is actually a good news, though. Wait, he recalled only a few units. Huh. I guess he's trying to go for the Omega flank. We're gonna kill that uh, thing right there. Oh, both of those things. The Immortal going down and the Disruptor. And, oh yeah, he does have way too much stuff. Oh, holy moly. Right, guys. I know I'm, I like splitties, but here the splitties are not going to make the difference. Hold position on the SCVs. Maybe the last hope, but no, he has done it. GG well played. Our greed was too much for the 66 Protoss players, but I'm very proud of how far we came. First two series was awesome. This series was also really awesome, to be honest. First game, beautiful TVP macro game on the back of greed. So a little bit lucky we got away with it, but beautiful. And in both these last two games, we lost, but we were in impossible situations and we almost made it happen. Amazing fight in game two. Amazing fight in this game, but our opponent was a little bit too good. Congrats to him. He had a lot of good moves. And for me, I would like to give a dedicated outro, but I'm hella tired after this. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.